Sunday the 16th of December will see the 2018 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Awards ceremony take place at the Genting Arena in Birmingham, the 65th edition of the awards. Performances will include George Ezra, Plumber Faith, Freya Ridings and Free Lions will be sung by the Lightning Seeds, David Baddiel and Frank Skinner. Unlike previous years, the shortlist for the main BBC Sport Personality of the Year award will only be announced on the night of the show to possibly stop any campaigns being made to vote for any one person in particular. In this video, I will go through all of the categories that are likely to be in the ceremony and give my opinion on who could be up for each award, who I think will win the award and who I want to win the award. I will end by going through my list of 10 to 13 people who I'm predicting to be on the final list as well as who I think the public will vote as their top three and who I would vote to be on my top three and who I would crown as the 2018 BBC Sports Personality of the Year. I will leave timestamps in the description so you can skip forward to any of the awards you may or may not be interested in. With that being said, let's get into my predictions for the 2018 Sports Personality of the Year. Firstly, there are a few awards which can be hard to have a prediction on who could win them, so I will start with these. The first of these is the Unsung Hero Award which is given to the sports person who has made a substantive yet unrecognised contribution to sport. Award winners are chosen from each region in the country, along with Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, with a judging panel choosing a winner from all the regional winners. Some other regional winners this year include Mike Day, Chairman of Special Olympics Birmingham, who organises Special Olympic style sessions for people with learning or intellectual disabilities. Katie Huey, who founded Hackney Laces to give teenage girls the chance to play football. Swimming volunteer Kirsty Ewan, who overcame mental health issues to inspire others to do the same and find a better place through swimming. And many more deserving people. I will leave a link in the description to the BBC Unsung Heroes page so you can find out more about all the regional winners and their stories. Next, there is the Helen Rollison Award, which is given for outstanding achievement in the face of adversity. Named after the BBC sport presenter and journalist who battled colon cancer for two years before sadly passing away in 1999, aged 43. Previous winners include Bradley Lowry last year, Anne Williams in 2013, Paul Hunter in 2006 and many more. Once again, this is a category you can't really predict or say who should or shouldn't win as there are many people who would deserve this. One person who I feel could win this year however is race driver Billy Monger who had the lower part of both of his legs amputated after a crash in a Formula 4 race on the 16th of April 2017. Despite this however, he has carried on racing, making his return to the track just three months later. This year, he has competed in the British Formula 3 Championship, scoring two pole positions and four podiums, finishing sixth in the championship. He also got to test drive a 2011 Sauber Formula 1 car in June and has had a BBC documentary made about his story. Most people would be scared to ever get in a car again after an accident like his, let alone driving one or racing competitively at a higher level and in a faster car than the car he had an accident in in the first place. He would be a well deserving winner of the Helen Rollison Award in my opinion. The final award which can be hard to predict is the Lifetime Achievement Award which awards a person who has made a major impact on the world of sport during their lifetime. Past winners include Sir Alex Ferguson in 2001, Pele in 2005, Sir Steve Redgrave in 2011, Michael Phelps in 2016 and many more. It can be given to someone from any sport in any country and with so many good sports people around the world this can be hard to narrow down. I have come up with a few suggestions who haven't received the award yet but who could win this year. Firstly, recently retired or soon to be retired sports people have won quite often over the last few years. So with that in mind, here are a few people who fit that bill. Firstly, 
Fernando Alonso has just finished in Formula 1 after starting in 2001, winning two world championships in 2005 and 2006. However, I feel if someone from motorsport was picked, it could be Michael Schumacher, who won a record 7 Formula 1 world championships throughout his career and he helped build up the Mercedes F1 team before he retired, who have since won 5 years in a row. He is still fighting a battle off the track as well after a skiing accident in December 2013 and it would be a fitting tribute to him if he was to receive this award. In darts, Phil Taylor retired at the very start of 2018 after winning 16 world championships, 85 major titles and 214 professional tournaments in total. He was also the runner up in the 2010 Sports Personality of the Year award behind AP McCoy. In cricket, Alistair Cook retired from international cricket as the 5th highest run scorer and the highest scoring left handed batter in test cricket history, but more about him later. In football, Arsene Wenger left Arsenal after 22 years as manager, winning 3 Premier League titles and 7 FA Cups, as well as changing the face of football in England. In tennis, Roger Federer is still going and he managed to become the world number one again this year as well as winning his 20th Grand Slam in Australia. Finally, just as there has never been a motorsport winner, there has never been a rugby winner, so maybe that could change this year. It is 15 years since England won the Rugby World Cup in Australia, so maybe one of the winning players could win, which would most likely be Johnny Wilkinson who did the winning kick, or the captain Martin Johnson. It could also be the coach, Sir Clive Woodward. Any of these people would be deserving of the award, but it also could be someone completely different as well. If I was to pick the most likely, I would either say Phil Taylor or Arsene Wenger. Now we get onto the awards that are easier to pick a winner from, because the shortlist has been given or the winner has already been announced. The winner already announced is the Young Sports Personality of the Year award which is awarded to the sports person aged 17 or under as of the 1st of January of that year who has made the most outstanding contribution to sport in that year with past winners including Wayne Rooney, Andy Murray, Tom Daly, Phil Foden and Claudia Fragapani who gave out the award this year. 10 were chosen for the shortlist which was then whittled down to 3 and then just to 1 with para-athlete Cara Adenigan winning the award. This year, she became the T34 100m World Para-Athletics European Champion and the 100m World Record Holder, as well as beating Hannah Cockcroft for the first time when setting the world record, the only athlete to do so. One of the shortlisted awards is the BBC World Sports Star of the Year, which has replaced the Overseas Sports Personality of the Year. The award is presented to the World Sports Star, whose achievements are most captured the public's imagination during 2018, i.e. the person who has made the most substantial contribution to a sport in that year. Recent winners include Usain Bolt, Sebastian Vettel, Cristiano Ronaldo and Roger Federer. There are four people up for this award this year. First on the shortlist is American gymnast Simone Biles, who won the award in 2016. This year, she won six medals at the 2018 World Gymnastics Championships, including four gold medals. She won a record-breaking fourth all-around title despite suffering from a kidney stone and being in hospital the day before. She's also the first gymnast to win every event at the US National Championship since 1994. Second on the shortlist is Czech snowboarder and alpine skier Esther Ledecka, who became the first ever female athlete to win an Olympic gold medal in two different sports during the same Winter Olympics, winning gold in the Super G in alpine skiing and gold in the parallel giant slalom in snowboarding. Third on the shortlist is Italian golfer Francesco Molinari. He won his first major of his career by winning the Open and he won the BMW PGA Championship. As well as that, he won five matches out of five at the Ryder Cup and he was part of the first European pairing to win all four matches at a single Ryder Cup alongside 
Tommy Fleetwood. He also won the European Tour, Race to Dubai, and the European Tour Player of the Year. The final name on the shortlist is Ukrainian boxer Alexander Yusik. He unified the WBO and WBC cruiserweight titles by beating Marius Bredis before adding the WBA, IBF and the Ring Magazine belts to his collection after defeating Murat Gaziev. He finished the year by defeating Tony Bellew to defend his titles and he is now 16-0. I was originally thinking that Simone Biles would win, but seeing as it was not a Summer Olympics year and because of the fact that he won the Open and played a massive part in winning the Ryder Cup, I think Francesco Molinari will win the award. However, I want Esther Ledecka to win the award. It is hard enough to win a gold medal in one Winter Olympic sport, let alone two. She never even medalled in an international skiing event in her career and was ranked 49th in the world before the event. Media outlets were even calling the winner of the event before her run as no one expected her to get close to the time, let alone beat it. Seeing that it is a Winter Olympics year, I think it would be fair and right to give her the award, but to be honest, all four of them would deserve the award if they got it. The next category that has been shortlisted for this year is a brand new award for 2018 called the Greatest Sporting Moment of the Year Award which unsurprisingly will be awarded to the sporting moment that most captured the UK's public imagination during 2018. First on the list is England's netball team winning Commonwealth Games gold for the first time against Australia in Australia with the last throw of the game on the 15th of April in what was a massive underdog shock. Second on the list is from the 3rd of July in Moscow, Russia when England finally won a World Cup penalty shootout by beating Colombia 4-3 on penalties in the last 16. The third moment on the list happened on the 10th of September at the Oval in London when Alistair Cook scored a century in his last ever test match innings before retiring, reaching 147 in total. The fourth moment on the list happened in the same month on the 23rd of September in Atlanta, USA when Tiger Woods won his first event for five years by winning the season-ending Tour Championship by two shots. Finally, the last moment on the list came earlier this month, on the 1st of December, when Tyson Fury came back from two knockdowns in the 9th and 12th rounds to draw with WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder, although Fury was unlucky not to win. Because the boxing was recent, I feel like it will stick in people's minds more and get more votes than it may have done if it happened in January. However, I think England's penalty shootout win will win the award and that is what I want to win as well. I can vividly remember that penalty shootout and the elation I felt when Eric Dyer scored that penalty is unlike any other that I can think of from any sporting moment in 2018. Two bonus moments should be mentioned though. Firstly, Kieran Trippier's free kick goal in the World Cup semi-final against Croatia in the 5th minute may have been up there on the list if we had not lost the match. Also, Harry Kane's last minute winner against Tunisia was a great moment which I can remember celebrating like crazy in a pub, which was more relief than anything else. Finally, this may be biased as I am a Wigan Athletic fan, but Will Griggs' goal against Man City to knock them out in the FA Cup 5th round was something I will never forget from 2018. The final three awards have no shortlist for them, so I will be making my own predictions for these. The first is the Team of the Year award, given to the team in an individual sport or sporting discipline that has achieved the most notable performance in the calendar year to date, and the team should have significant UK interest or involvement. Recent winners include Leicester City, the England women's cricket team, and the Great Britain Davis Cup team. Here's some of the teams I think will be in contention. Firstly, it is hard to look past Manchester City after they won the League Cup and the Premier League and became the first Premier League team to reach 100 points in a season, scoring 106 goals in the process. The England's men's football team will be on this list as well after reaching the semi-finals of the World Cup and finishing top of their group and qualifying for the semi-finals in the inaugural UEFA Nations League. 
beating Spain and Croatia in the process. As mentioned earlier, the England netball team won gold in the Commonwealth Games by beating host Australia and they will surely be in the running, along with Team Europe for winning the Ryder Cup 17.5 to 10.5 against USA. Mercedes F1 team won their fifth consecutive Drivers and Constructors Championship and their base is in Brackley so I believe they do qualify for this award. The England men's cricket team beat the number one test ranked team in India 4-1 in the summer, along with beating Australia 5-0 in one day internationals. They also broke the record for the highest score in a one day international match, scoring 481 against Australia in the same series. And they recently beat Sri Lanka 3-0 away from home. However, with the Cricket World Cup and the Ashes being held in England in 2019, they may have a better chance to win the award in 2019 if successful. Also in cricket, Surrey Cricket Club won the county championship for the first time in 16 years, so they are likely to be on the shortlist, but they are also unlikely to win. The Island Rugby Union team won the Grand Slam in the Six Nations, and they beat New Zealand as well, so they will probably be on the shortlist. My final prediction for the shortlist is the Team GB skeleton team who won a combined three medals at the 2018 Winter Olympics with Lizzie Arnold and Laura Dees winning gold and bronze respectively in the women's skeleton and Don Parsons winning bronze in the men's skeleton. Team GB won five medals overall in the Winter Olympics so they could be on the shortlist too but my guess is that it will be Team GB skeleton instead of Team GB in general. I think either the England football team or the England netball team will win the award, with the football team reaching two semi-finals in one year, having not reached one semi-final for 28 years, and the netball team winning a very unexpected gold medal. However, I want either the Mercedes F1 team or Man City to win. To win five drivers and constructors championships in a row, especially in a year when Ferrari had the better car for quite a few races as well is an amazing achievement, just like getting 100 points is in the Premier League, so either of those would be worthy winners for me. The next category is Coach of the Year, which is awarded to the coach or coaches who are considered to have made the most substantive contribution to British sport in that year. Recent winners include Sir Dave Brailsford, Warren Gatland, Claudio Ranieri and the UK Athletic Sprint Relay Team coaches last year. Most of the coaches of the year I have selected are involved in teams nominated for team of the year. These include Gareth Southgate and the England football team, Pep Guardiola and Man City, Tracy Neville and England netball, Joe Schmidt and Ireland rugby and Thomas Bjorn and Team Europe. I also think the coaches of the Team GB skeleton team could win the award. Finally, an unlikely winner but someone who could be nominated is Sean Wayne the head coach of Wigan Warriors who left at the end of the season by winning the Super League Grand Final for the third time in five years. I think that Gareth Southgate will win the award, not just for the results but also the fact he has brought many fans back to supporting England who had lost faith in the national team over the last couple of decades. I do think Pep Guardiola deserves it even more though, seeing as no team ever has got 100 points in the Premier League era. He would be very unlucky not to win it. But then again, all the coaches I have mentioned have had a great year, so it isn't easy at all. But my coach of the year is Pep Guardiola. Here's a list of the 12 outsiders which may or may not feature on the shortlist. There are more as well who could have gone on this list. 
Anthony Joshua may be surprised to be on the outsiders list after he won both of his fights and remained undefeated, but I've put a boxer who had a more recent fight on the list instead, which we'll see soon. I still think Joshua will be on the shortlist if there are more than 10 names, but he may be cut out if there are just 10 names, seeing as he didn't really have a massive fight this year. Well, snooker player Mark Williams could be on the shortlist, given he won his second World Snooker Championship this year, and his first for 15 years at the age of 43, but I think he may just miss out. At the other end of the scale, Rob Cross won his first World Darts Championship at the first attempt, beating darts legend Phil Taylor in the final, in Taylor's last ever professional match. In cricket, James Anderson was part of the England squad that beat India 4-1 and Sri Lanka 3-0, and with the last wicket of the match and the series against India, he became the leading wicket taker by a fast bowler in test match cricket history. In swimming, Adam Peaty won four European Championship golds and one gold and two silvers at the Commonwealth Games. He also held the 11 best times in 50m breaststroke and the 14 best times in the 100m breaststroke after the European Championship. He has been a regular on the shortlist over the last four years, but he may struggle to get on the list this year depending on how many are chosen, but I will pick him as my second of my three wild cards. In tennis, Carl Edmund reached the semi-finals of the Australian Open and is currently ranked 14th in the world, the highest rank he has been. In cycling, there's been a large amount of success, with British riders winning all three major tours. Simon Yates won the Vuelta a España and Chris Froome won the Giro d'Italia for the first time each. Froome's win made him the seventh rider to win all three Grand Tours and the third rider to hold all three Grand Tour titles simultaneously in a single 12 month period. However, another British rider's success may mean they both miss out on the shortlist. There was some great success in British golf. Firstly, Georgia Hall won her first major tournament by winning the Women's British Open at 22. Justin Rose managed to become the number one ranked golfer in the world in 2018, as well as winning the 2018 season long FedEx Cup, finishing joint second at the Open Championship and winning two points for Europe in their Ryder Cup win. Tommy Fleetwood also had a great year as he finished second in US Open and he won all four doubles matches at the Ryder Cup with Francesco Molinari becoming the first European pair to do so in Ryder Cup history. Finally, one name you may not have heard of is mountain biker Rachel Averton, who won her 6th World Cup overall title and 5th World Downhill Mountain Bike Championship. In a quieter year, she may have got on the shortlist, but I don't think she will this year. The three who I do think could be on the list are Anthony Joshua, Adam Peaty and either Justin Rose or Tommy Fleetwood but all 13 of them could be on the list, and it wouldn't be a surprise. The next 10 names I will say are people who are very likely to almost 100% certain to be on the list, with the top 3 likely to come from this list of 10 people. Jonathan Ray finished second on the list last year behind Samo Farah, I expect him to be on the list in 2018. He once again won the World Superbike Championship, winning it for the 4th year in a row, winning the last 11 races of the season and 17 races in total. Could he go one better in 2018? I think it is unlikely, but he should make it on the shortlist. Sticking to motorsport, I expect Lewis Hamilton to make the list once again after winning his 5th World Championship title in Formula 1 in what has been one of, if not his best season in Formula 1 to date, including winning races that no one expected him to win like Germany and Italy and then sensational qualifying lap and win at Singapore, which had been a poor track for Mercedes recently. Mercedes weren't always the fastest car during the season either, with Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel taking that claim for big parts of the season. He is unlikely to win on Sunday however, due to some of the British public not being his biggest fan, for one reason or the other. Two of the biggest events of the year were the 2018 Winter Olympics and Paralympics in South Korea and two members of Team GB are on my predicted shortlist.
The first is Lizzie Arnold, who once again was the Queen of Speed out on the track as she won gold in the skeleton for the second Winter Olympics in a row when many were predicting her teammate Laura Dees to win instead. In doing so, she became the most decorated British Winter Olympian of all time and the only British Winter Olympian to win two gold medals and defend their title. She retired from skeleton in October, meaning this will be her last time to win the main Sports Personality of the Year award. In the Paralympics, visually impaired skier Mena Fitzpatrick and her guide Jennifer Kehoe won the gold in the slalom, silver in the super combined and giant slalom and bronze in the super G to go home with four medals and become Team GB's most decorated Winter Paralympian at just 19 years old at the time. If either Mena or Lizzie don't deserve to be on the shortlist, then I don't know who does. There was a lot of sport over the summer and the next four people all had success over that period. First up, we can't talk about the summer without mentioning the World Cup in Russia, with England reaching the semi-finals for the first time since 1990 and winning a penalty shootout on the way. One of the main people who was key to England's success was captain Harry Kane, whose six goals meant he won the Golden Boot, the first English player to do so since Gary Lineker in 1986. He scored two against Tunisia, including a last-minute winner, a hat-trick against Panama and one against Colombia, as well as converting his penalty in the shootout in the same game. He also managed 30 goals in the Premier League and 41 in all competitions for Tottenham and he's pretty much 100% guaranteed to be on the shortlist and is likely to be in the top three. Another success came in the form of cycling with Geraint Thomas winning the Tour de France for the first time and the sixth British winner in seven years. He won the Welsh Sports Personality of the Year for 2018 and he is likely to get a large vote from Wales if he is on the shortlist, which he should be. In athletics, sprinter Dina Asher-Smith had a great year, winning gold in 100m and 200m at the European Championships. She also won gold in the 4x100m at the European Championships and the Commonwealth Games and bronze in 200m at the Commonwealth Games and should be in with a shot of being on the shortlist, although it's unlikely that she would rank highly. In cricket, as mentioned in the Lifetime Achievement Awards section, Alistair Cook retired from international cricket as the fifth highest run scorer and highest scoring left-handed batter in test cricket history. He also scored a century in his last test match innings, meaning he scored a century in his first test and last test. It is pretty unlikely he would win a Lifetime Achievement Award but it is more likely he will be on the shortlist and may rank higher than he would on a regular year due to his achievements throughout his career with England. Finally, there are a couple of sporting moments that have happened this month and there are two people who could be on the shortlist due to those. Firstly, Tyson Fury made his comeback after 30 months out from boxing this year, winning two relatively easy fights in June and August. His big fight came on December 1st against Deontay Wilder, with the winner likely to face Anthony Joshua in 2019. The spine being knocked to the ground in the 9th and 12th round, with the knockdown in the 12th round brutal indeed. He got up both times and managed to draw, although this was seen as a controversial result, with many saying that Fury should have won. He is very likely to be on the shortlist despite the controversy of him in 2015, and because this fight was very recent, it is very likely to be in people's minds still and could see him be one of the favourites to win. The final name I think will be on the shortlist is Ronnie O'Sullivan, who has won 5 events in total in 2018 and has achieved 2 maximum breaks. One of these event wins was the UK Championship when he beat Mark Allen 10-6 on the 10th of December. This win however meant he had won his 7th UK Championship title which was a new record and his 19th triple crown title also a new record. Both of these facts could see him added to the shortlist at the last minute and if he does get added he would receive a lot of support from snooker vans and could finish in the top three just like other people from sports such as rugby league, darts, triathlon and equestrian have in recent years. Now that my shortlist has been decided 
who do I think will be in the public's top three, and who is in my top three? As I said earlier, according to the BBC, the award goes to the sports person whose actions have most captured the UK's public imagination during 2018. But what does that mean? A lot of the public vote on people for their personality and not their achievements, which could be why some people have missed out over the years. However, personality, i.e. the combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive character, isn't what this is about, or else the shortlist will be completely different every year to what it actually is. The other definition of personality is a celebrity or famous person, which is the meaning that the BBC use. The award should probably be renamed Sports Person of the Year to confirm that fact, but I don't think that will happen. A quick Twitter search will see you find tweets of people complaining that Andy Murray shouldn't have won it three times because he has no personality, or saying Tyson Fury or Ronnie O'Sullivan have loads of personality so they should win it easily. Apart from the fact Andy Murray does have a personality and does a lot to stand up for women in sport, being outspoken and having a personality has nothing to do with this award. It is a celebration of British sporting success every year, with the public deciding who they think was the best or who has been the best. I also like to take into account what events have been taking place over the year. For example, this year has seen the World Cup, the Winter Olympics and the Commonwealth Games all taking place, so people from each of those should have a chance to win if successful. Furthermore, the World Cup and the Winter Olympics are the pinnacle of those sports, so success in those should mean more than success in other years. Similarly, sports like Rugby Union and Cricket, whose World Cups take place in 2019, may take a back burner this year, but should be allowed more chance to shine in 2019 if there is any success in those sports. With this being said, many people will still take the personality side into consideration, and that is why I think the public will vote Tyson Fury as the 2018 Sports Personality of the Year, with emphasis on the public. He had an amazing fight, don't get me wrong, and his comeback to get to that point is inspiring, but I feel many of the other people have had a better 2018 in their sport compared to Tyson. He hasn't actually won anything significant, even if he should have won the fight versus Wilder. This may just be that I'm not his biggest fan, however, but even so, I don't think he should be winning. If he was to finish second or third, I think that would be a respectable finish, but I think first would be a bit too much. Because the fight was only a couple of weeks ago though, he will get the votes from people who still feel he should have won the fight. This is commonplace in sports personality events and voting events in general. With good performances closer to when the vote actually opens, having a greater effect than performances near the start of the year. That is why in the Eurovision Song Contest, going first is usually seen as being a bad draw, as people may have forgotten about your performance by the end. In addition, his van base contains a lot of people who may be likely to vote in a public vote, so I feel he's going to have a lot of people voting for him, and he's going to win. If Ronnie O'Sullivan makes a shortlist, I feel he will also get this December vote, and the vote from snooker fans, and will finish second. If he isn't on the shortlist, I think Harry Kane will finish second, but I won't be surprised if Harry isn't in the top three at all, with some fans feeling a golden boot at a World Cup doesn't matter because of who the goals were against or the fact England didn't win. Not like Belgium had the same games in the group stage or three other teams played the same number of games and nobody scored more than four goals. Even though the World Cup brought back some love, there's still a group of fans who are very pessimistic about the England team and cannot celebrate any sort of success. Finally, I think the Welsh vote will mean that Geraint Thomas will finish third, regardless of whether Kane or O'Sullivan finishes second, and I wouldn't be surprised if he finished higher either. In my top three, it is slightly different. In third, I couldn't decide between a few names. There is usually one name in the top three who isn't a regular on the shortlist and gets a big vote, and I feel that could happen to either Lizzie Arnold, Mena Fitzpatrick or Ronnie O'Sullivan, 
with it being a Winter Olympic and Paralympic year. Both Lizzie and Mena deserve recognition for their achievement, and so does Ronnie, who has become one of the most decorated snooker players of all time. It was close between two people for my top two, Lewis Hamilton and Harry Kane. I'm a big fan of both guys, and their achievements are both amazing. Just finishing in second for me is Lewis Hamilton. I don't think he will get the public vote top three due to him not living in the UK and his private jet scandal from a couple of years ago. Not like Gary Barlow, Michael Caine, David Beckham, Jimmy Carr, Bear Grylls or many other celebrities have ever avoided tax. Winning five world championships is an incredible achievement and this has probably been his best year driving wise as well and he has had to use all of his talent to beat Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel who at one point looked like they could win the championship. However, I have just narrowly given Harry Kane sports personality of the year. He had another great season with Tottenham scoring over 40 goals in all competitions and then led England to a 4th place finish at the World Cup scoring vital goals along the way. He also scored a vital winner against Croatia in the UEFA Nations League group stage match to send England to the top of the group and relegate Croatia. People will say that Tottenham or England didn't win anything, so why should Harry Kane win Sports Personality of the Year? No one complained about Luka Modric winning the Golden Ball and the FIFA World Player of the Year despite not winning the World Cup, although his club success also helped. Michael Owen won Sports Personality of the Year in 1998 when he only scored 18 goals in the league and 2 at the World Cup when England got knocked out in the last 16. So why can't Kane? At the same time, Gary Lineker did win the Golden Boot in 1986 and he didn't finish in the top 3. Although, he did play for Barcelona so he may not have qualified for the 1986 Sports Personality of the Year. He may not be the flashiest or most attractive footballer but why should that make a difference? If people are voting on personality, Harry Kane is one of the nicest footballers that is around. He doesn't drink, he's a hard worker, he likes to stay at home with his wife, child and dogs and play Fortnite. He's the opposite to what the media portrays a footballer to be like and that is what is great about him. I think he's well deserving of the award and hopefully when it comes to 2019, Tottenham and England will have some silverware under their belt so he can win it again. So here are all my predictions for the different categories that will be announced on Sunday. What do you think of my predictions? Is there any you agree with or do you massively disagree with them all? Let me know in the comments. I would also love to hear your opinion on what you look at when deciding your winner for Sports Personality of the Year. Do you take the name literally and focus on picking the person with the best personality? Or do you focus more on the success and the achievements that each individual has done and what sporting events have happened over the year, like me? If you want to see me do a review of the show where I see how many predictions I got right or wrong, let me know. And if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more videos like this on different sporting topics, please feel free to subscribe. That would be really helpful. I fear this video has gone on for a very long time now, so I'll end it here. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.